Greetings! Welcome back to another one of my uh, reviews. Again, this one's going to cover a CCTV product. And as many of you know, I was in the industry for like 20 years. Uh, so sometimes I like to show you what I had to install way back then. Um, when I had to install a pan tilt zoom camera and a recorder, we, we, we had things like this. And you know, th this was uh, about well, close to two grand uh, for this item. It has a dome on it too, of course. And uh, for recording purposes, uh, we had to figure out what we were going to do for a recorder. And uh, in this case, I've got a, uh, um, a DVR. And this uh, professional quality DVR, about six, seven hundred dollars back then. And if you wanted a light source to light up the area, you needed to add a light source. But the thing is, nowadays, um, consumers, you know, they haven't made really because of everything I paid multiple grand, you know, two or three grand for back then, just for one camera and it's recording and everything. Um, consumers can get things like this for under a hundred bucks. Go beat that, huh? And believe it or not, this has more features than all of that combined equipment I just showed you. And we'll get into that here in a little bit. So let's let's go into the unboxing of the product and uh, we can review it further after that. All right, today we are talking about the Submiku Pan Tilt Zoom two lens camera. And this has got some pretty neat features in it. And we'll go over all those features once we get it set up and running and testing things like that. But for right now, we're just gonna unbox this and uh, see what comes in it. Uh, this is my first glance into this also. So um, right off the bat, we get a network cable. Uh, it's just a short one, but I assume for people that want to set this up right next to your computer or router, uh, that would work great. And uh, power plug. Remember, this is not a uh, battery-operated device. This needs to be plugged into your wall outlet at home or in the office and it's it's well packaged let's move the box out of the way <clears throat> all right um, right off the bat you know you've got your pan and tilt and here's your two lenses you've got illuminators here for IR and white light so you'll get uh, once a white light comes on at night you get a color image uh, rather than the uh, normal black and white that you get with an IR um, light source. And on the end here, you've got uh, a cable for your network connection. That's if you want to, if you do not want to use the Wi-Fi, if you want to plug directly into your router, uh, that's what you would do. And there's a, there's a cap in the package here to cover this if you're not using it. There's also a little light on here. I thought it was kind of unique. Uh, that indicates your, your network connection. So what do you say we uh, go, I'll go over these instructions real quick and then we'll be right back and we will uh, connect it up to the router and uh, power it up. Uh, be with you in a flash here. All right. Before we go powering this up, we want to place the SD card in the device. So we take the weather boot off and put the SD card in there. We're going to leave that off just a minute so we can reset it here. And let's Power up the camera. And now we're going to press and hold that reset button for a little bit until we hear an indication that it wants to reset. Come on. System starting up. Okay. Now, be configured. now it's recycling or cycling the uh, pan and tilt to confirm everything's working properly and finding its home position 
and we're going to place this back on here so we don't forget to do that now let's quick go into the uh, the ICC app say that quick ten times <laughs> and uh, right off the bat you'll see a plus up here we're going to touch that plus we are going to select Wi-Fi camera and now it says to please follow the uh, user manual instructions to power up the camera. We've already done that. So let's hit next. And we've already heard it say it started up. We'll hit next again. And now it wants me to put password in. And because of that, I'm going to pull away from the screen here. All right. Now it wants to do the QR code read. So we push Connecting, up. please read. Couldn't quite understand that last word. Connect your router successfully. Okay. And you know it did that without reading the QR code, unless it saw it from an angle. Uh, now it wants to add a password. I'm not quite sure what password to use. So let's try... All right, I put the password in there for that camera, and now it's asking where it's going to be. Uh, it doesn't say, mention, I'm just gonna put garage, but that's not necessarily where I'm going to place it. And robot one, okay. Uh, we, we should be able to go in later and change the name and everything, but for now, we're just gonna hit garage and hit save. Local storage, I've got uh, local storage and we are going to be on continuous record. So, and that's a big plus and I'll explain why that's the case too. And we've got a memory card installed. Next step, alarm push switch, yep. And again, we're probably going to be repeating this once everything gets going. So it appears that we are now set up. So I am going to go ahead and go install the device outside. I'll do some testing and we'll come back and uh, we'll look at all the results. We'll be back. All right, let's get this baby hung now. As you can see, I've already got uh, two of the bottom screws in and they'll slide in the slots here and let me uh, put the top one in so let's slide that in i'm mounting it on my regular test stand here i use this test stand before i do anything else i want to make sure it works before i go drilling anything into stucco so now let's put the uh, top screw in to secure it There, that secures it now. And really all we've got left to do is uh, plug power in. Since we're not using the LAN connection, I did put a cap on that that comes with it. And whenever you plug in uh, the power to this, you should put some tape around this too to uh, kind of give it some waterproofing. But we are pretty set. This should be powering up here in just a second and uh, spinning around and talking to us. Uh, let's see if it does that. System starting up. See, system starting up. Connect to router successfully. Yeah, connected to the router now. It's cycling uh, to make sure the uh, pan and tilt works okay. There it goes. So let's go inside and uh, after I do some testing over the next day or so, I will be back with the results and some additional programming. But to you, it's going to be just like that through the magic of editing. See you in a bit. Welcome back. Okay. Um, I just spent the last few days uh, doing some testing and I must say, um, 
this is one of my more enjoyable testing routines that I've gone through. Uh, this camera can do some amazing things, and I'll go over with them with you in a little bit here. But before I do, I just want to give you some um, highlights of the camera. It's a Sovmikyu Pan Tilt Zoom two lens camera. Uh, it's got 355 degree pan, 90 degree tilt, auto tracking PTZ, and eight times optical zoom. You get that optical, not digital. That's very important. Um, it has a floodlight and siren when you want it to have. Um, it's got two way audio. It'll hold up to 128 gig micro SD card. Uh, which is not included. You have to provide that yourself. <clears throat> or you can get the optional cloud storage if you want to pay a little bit for it. Some of those cloud storage uh, packages can be pretty nice. It's got a uh, 4 megapixel high definition resolution, which is quite high uh, for a consumer camera that costs, I won't say cheap, uh, it's uh, a minimal price. Uh, for something like that. All right, let's look at some footage from the last few days and nights here. Um, there you see me coming out and uh, we're in the uh, non-tracking mode and we're looking at an IR only lighting situation. And um, I, I kind of prefer that to be honest with you. Now the next one should be basically in the stationary mode again, but the white light will, will turn on uh, shortly and you'll see it turn to color. Okay, there I'm out walking out there in the distance and I'm moving closer there. The white light came on and the image went to full color. Uh, th that is fascinating enough. I mean, more and more cameras are being able to do that. Uh, but just wait a couple minutes. You're going to see some really neat stuff. Okay, now we're in daytime. Again, we are not doing any tracking at this point. Here I come from the mailbox. Okay, I believe we're going to tracking. Yes, we are. I'm coming off the street. Look how it not only pans and tilts, but it also zooms in. That's incredible. I mean, when I was in the industry, industry back in the 90s and 2000s, um, we didn't have that, not unless you were willing to pay two or three thousand dollars for a PTZ camera. Now you're getting it for under a hundred bucks. Uh, consumer cameras have really moved along here in the last uh, five to ten years. Here I'm, I'm intentionally trying to zigzag and the camera is still following me. Look at that. And you're going to see some instances here where when it's done tracking, after so many seconds, it's going to go back to the home position. There it went. Um, you'll see a couple more examples of that in just a bit. Here I am again, walking around with my Gilligan cap on. Incredible. Boy, I wish I had that when I was in the business in a consumer grade camera because uh, commercial grade cameras that could do that, like I say, were out of reach for most buyers. And you're going to see it go to the home position here after I believe I have it set at 15 seconds. There it goes. Goes back to its home position. And there I am again. Okay, now we're going to show you a few examples of what this camera can do. 
And uh, first off, obviously we all know we can do pans and tilts with it like I'm doing here. So you can go up and down and over and over the other way. But now watch some of this real neat footage here. I can go into the presets. Uh, let's select preset one and hit the call button. Look at that. Now it's looking over the construction equipment next door. And after uh, 15 seconds, it's going to go back to the home position. And if you're not in the auto tracking mode, it'll stay there until you move it. Okay, let's try two. Hit call. I don't know if you noticed, but when I when I did some of this, uh, it zoomed in a little bit on its own too, but and not quite like uh, the auto tracking does. Uh, in fact, you know what? Let's see if it did uh, zoom in. I'm gonna go back to one. <clears throat> Yeah, it, it did zoom in too. Uh, let's try three. And if that box is bothering you that's in there, you just hit the cancel button and it'll disappear. Uh, go back into presets. And I believe five is my home position. So uh, let's hit five and call. Incredible. That's, that's neat. I really love that. Okay. Um, auto tracking. If you go into auto tracking setup here, um, I have it off, but like I can turn it on right now if I want just by going like that. Uh, Sensitivity is at, at the middle level, and my return home position is 15 seconds. And you see where it says uh, set watch position. That, that's, your, that's this home position here. So whenever it's done tracking, it's going to go back to that. <clears throat> okay, let's go into some settings here now and check them out, see what kind of different things you can do with that. Uh, down in the lower right corner of that image you see, you'll see a button for settings. Just tap on that. Uh, basic settings, there's not a whole lot here. You can... Um, change your uh, camera name right now I have it a driveway you, you can pretty much change that to whatever you want uh, it's got speaker volume remember it has uh, two-way audio uh, so you can adjust your speaker outside for that uh, and back up here a bit uh, local storage that'll tell you uh, what you have in the SD slot uh, right now I've just got a 32 gig I do plan on changing that to a 128 though since I'm recording 24-7. And it tells you how, how much of the card is full. And I have overwritten check. Uh, down below there where it says overwrite, I have that checked. And what that means is when the card gets full, it's going to start erasing the older images on there, the older video, and replacing it with new. It's basically just going to be a big loop uh, back up here. Uh, smart alarm okay uh, right now we have it set to go into the alarm position and um, we have human detection turned on and that gives us some extra settings um, just so you know you cannot have human detection on at the same time you're using auto tracking if you turn one on the other one is going to be disabled and so on and so forth um, action when it sees an, when it gets an alert it's asking you what you want it to send to your phone I basically have it a snapshot and then record um, the event uh, you can have the alarm out there flashing a light it's got some neat flashing effects if you want and also a video uh, right now, if you have a voice alarm, it'll be just um, a bell type alarm. But I, the way it looks here, you could probably put your own message on there. And I can imagine some of you would come up with some pretty racy comments. 
if you wanted to do that. Uh, I have it off myself. Okay, um, do not disturb. That means that during the night, if an alarm goes off, it's not going to be sending you a bunch of alerts on the phone. And advanced settings. Uh, this word gets kind of neat here. You can uh, go into where it'll show traces. If you do this, uh, when a person walks through the image, it's going to show you a little a track of where they came from. Um, I have that off. Sometimes it gets a kind of annoying. Um, rule setting. You can do some neat stuff with that. I have uh, basically the it mapped out here. If you go into that, see how you can change um, these settings here. Basically, um, what that is is uh, up here in the street where we don't have that marked. If somebody's walking along there, it's not going to send an alarm or alert to you but when they move into the driveway area yeah. it's going to be looking for what they consider human activity and if it sees that it's going to send you an alert and uh, mark the recording and as you can see below there you can do different um, angles with this like you can just you can do a triangle I, li I like the uh, Pentagon because you can do a whole lot with that. You see how I'm doing this here? Uh, go like that. So uh, ba basically I'm not getting the roadway. And you hit done. And uh, here's your sensitivity on your on the motion sensing ability. We have it at middle. Alarm interval. It's basically 10 minutes for me now. You can adjust this. So if you get an alarm, even though the motion continues or new motion happens, it's not going to send you an alert for 10 minutes. You can lower that down to zero if you want. Or will it go to zero? Yeah, uh, go to 30 seconds actually. Or you can go way up to like half an hour. Um, so if you have a lot of activity out there during the day in your neighborhood, you may not want to have it at 30 because you're going to be getting all kinds of dings on your phone. Uh, so you can adjust it with that there. <clears throat> um, alarm period, 24 hours. Basically, it's going to be in the alarm uh, standby mode for 24 hours a day back up here. Um, one thing I may not have mentioned about this camera, it's got two lenses and that, that's pretty unique for a cam for consumer cameras nowadays. It's basically a wide angle lens and a telephoto lens that'll do eight times uh, zoom and when you're zooming it's not a digital zoom like you normally get with your phone when you pinch out and that. It's actually using a combination of two lenses to get you to those points. Uh, in fact, um, let's quick exit here and show you on this right here. Now, well, I'm going the wrong way here. Let's go up a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna zoom in and those buttons just below there, I, I can do, I'll go to the second one here and it's going to do two times zoom. And if I do, uh, now watch what happens when I hit nine times zoom. I mean, you may be able to see the bricks. Um, look at that. <laughs> that's incredible. Uh, again, that's not a digital zoom. That's an optical zoom, which is uh, something else for a camera that costs under a hundred bucks. In any case, that pretty much covers everything I'd like to go over with you. I want to thank you for joining me, and I'd appreciate it if you'd keep an eye out for my future videos. I specialize in CCTV and security equipment, and once in a while I'll do gadgets as well. So, in the meantime, uh, you have a great day.
and we'll see you in the future. Thanks.